Hi guys, welcome to today's video. My name is McKenna Blanthorne and I'm so excited that you've joined us on the Silhouette YouTube channel. This month, the month of January in 2024, we are doing new year, new projects. So we are doing all new things. So make sure to like and subscribe and tune in every week for all new content. Today I'm gonna to be teaching you how to do some fridge organization because I feel like new year and organization just go hand in hand. So let's grab our supplies and let's get crafting along. Let's begin by going over the supplies that we're using today. This is a super simple vinyl project. So especially if you're a new Silhouette user, I promise you can make this today. So um, just to start out, I just have a sheet of Orical 651 vinyl. Um, I got this at Michael's, but you can get it at a lot of different craft stores. And then I also have Aura Tape, which is my transfer tape of choice, but you can use whatever transfer tape you might have on hand also. But those are the two must-haves for the project and then we also have some little bins right here i picked these up from target but i've seen similar bins on amazon at walmart um, at any craft store so you can totally find these anywhere um today i'm working with two kind of like skinnier small bins um, that are going to be a little bit smaller and then i have two big bins also so that's what i have today um, but obviously you're going to be organizing your fridge however you want to organize it these don't want to come apart <laughs> there we go so this is the other bin that i'm using um, so you're going to be using whatever bins you want you can use bins that you already have on hand if you have little containers i thought these were really handy because they're clear so you can see what's inside and we're obviously going to be labeling them with the white vinyl um, but you can use whatever you want. And then one point that I did want to make is you can use whatever color of vinyl you would like, but I'm using white. And the reason I'm using white is because it's just super, super clean and crisp when you put everything in the fridge and it's all clean and labeled with white. The inside of most fridges are white too, so I feel like that just makes it go really, really nicely. Um, if I wasn't gonna use white, I'd probably use black just to keep everything neutral. But if you want a colorful fridge, by all means, you guys do you. All right, and then also our machine that we're gonna be using today is the Cameo 5, the all new Cameo 5 machine. Um, you can use whatever silhouette machine you have, but I'm gonna be using this all new model today. It's super great, super smooth for matless cutting and everything, um, and I'm super excited to demo it today for you guys. So now that we have our supplies, oh, I forgot to mention our little tiny tools also. I'm gonna be using a silhouette hook tool, and then I'm also gonna be using a silhouette scraper tool um, and if you don't have these exact tools that's okay you can use whatever you have at home um, but those are what I'm going to be using so now that you have all of the supplies let's go ahead and hop in the software where I'm going to teach you guys how to create text labels in Silhouette Studio so here in the Silhouette software I have it set up for my Cameo 5 and I actually used a cutting mat last time to, but today I'm cutting matless so I'm going to turn that to none on my cutting mat selection number three and that's all I need to do to set up my project. Now we can design our project. So today, like I told you, I'm going to be making those labels. Um, and I have four boxes here today. And I know for sure one of my boxes is going to be protein bars because we buy these refrigerated protein bars and the boxes just do not fit good, fit good in the fridge. And they just end up being like all over our top shelf so i for sure want one for the protein bars and i might even dare say that is the inspiration behind this project today um, so one of my small skinny ones is going to be for protein bars i think the other one i'm going to do for um i was thinking sorry i had this all figured out in my head and now i'm second guessing myself maybe like um yogurts like gogurts my son really likes those so maybe we'll do those like yogurt drinks or yo i'll just do yogurt that's universal and then my other ones i saw this idea on instagram and i thought it was a super great idea um i want to do like a leftovers bin so i don't know about you guys but my leftovers i put them in tupperwares and then they always seem to float to the back of the fridge and then i forget about them so i had the thought to make a bin that's for leftovers and then i can just put the tupperwares in that bin and then we know to eat those first before we eat anything else and then for my last one I think I'm just gonna do fruits and veggies so that might rotate week by week it might be apples it might be carrots anything like that so um, let's go ahead and jump in the software now that I told all of you guys that um, but to do that we are going to be using the text tool over here 
and it's free with all versions of Silhouette Studio. So I have the business edition, as you guys can see up here, but today I'm going to um, you could be doing this with the basic version even. So I'm just going to click that text button and then I am going to um, click and then I'm just going to start typing. So I told you my first one was going to be protein bars and I'm going to do that on two different lines um, just because I think it's going to fit better. And then um, let's go ahead and f format afterwards. So we are going to do all of our text and then we'll format all of it. So the other one was going to be yogurt. And then the other one was leftovers. I don't know if leftovers is two words or one. I gotta be honest. I'm gonna have to double check that. And then um, the last one is going to be fruits and veggies. And we'll do that on two lines as well. Okay guys, so now we're gonna go ahead and format these and we have two different sizes of bins, like you'll remember. So we are going to go ahead and measure the bins to see. Um, and I'm not using a mat today. Usually I just use my mat and I lay it on top of this to see how big I need to make it because our mats have a um, grid on them that is good to measure, um, is good for measuring things. That's a half inch grid. But I'm gonna be using this little tape measure today. And so um, let's see, my bin, my small ones are three and three quarters inches wide and then they are about three and a half inches tall but I really don't want it to go over this little lip right here so I'm going to just do it three inches tall and I'm going to max out my height for those two um, I think so for protein bars I'm going to go ahead and click that and then I'm going to double click it and then I'm going to do command A to highlight everything and then I'm going to open up my um, text style panel on the right hand side and that's going to help me format my text. So I've been using two different fonts for all of my projects lately. One of them is this BFC Minor League and it's just like a really really nice bold font and I love that one um, but then the other one I've been using is not showing up right now. It usually shows up right at the top. Um, and I can't think of what it's called off the top of my head, so we are gonna go with this one. Um, and I really like this font. I think this is a really great font for labeling things because it's really big and blocky, which for me is really important. So um, I have protein bars right here. And then something that I wanna do to um, just maximize my space is I like to um, ungroup my letters when I have two lines. And I'm gonna group protein and then I'm gonna group bars. And then I actually want to make my bars the same width as protein. So I'm just gonna change all of this to 2.9 for now. And then I'm gonna change my width for bars to 2.9 also. And I just like that. I think it makes just kind of a cool stylized label kind of, and that's just kind of how I like to do it. So now I'm gonna group those together. And right now it's two inches tall um, and 2.9 inches wide. So let's try and make it three inches tall and see how wide it is. So it's too wide, it's 4.2. Um, so in that case, let's just go ahead and make the width um, it was 3.75 so I'm gonna make it like 3.6 just to like really max out the width um, as much as I can and so our protein bars one is done that's all we need to do for that one but like I said you guys are designing this project however you want so if you want to do it differently use a different font you can use whatever font you have on your computer and the font I am using I did buy from the silhouette design store so you can look it up in the silhouette design store as well um, so now let's do yogurt. So I'm going to go ahead and double click that one, command A to select the text, and then I'm going to select that minor league again. And then this one, our label isn't going to be as big because it's a longer word, um, but I'm still going to make it like that max size. So I'm just going to, for this one, I'm just going to drag on these corners right here to make it like 3.6. That's good. And we'll just put that like right here. And then these ones, the other two are a lot bigger. So um, leftovers, we can do it super big, super blocky. I'm just gonna go ahead and measure this again. The height is gonna be the same. Um, yeah, so it's about three and a half. And then the width 
is, we'll just say eight, because that's where it starts to curve. So eight inches. So um, we can do it just right under eight inches. So I'm gonna go ahead and double click that, select my font, just like I did for all the other ones. And then let's just go ahead and make this about eight inches, a little bit less. We'll do 7.8, and we're just gonna bring this over here. And then as you can see right here, um, some of my letters are almost touching right here. So for this one, I'm gonna come down to my character spacing in my textile, and I'm going to just up it a tiny bit, even just like one, 110, I, I feel like was good. And then it just gives us some space right there between my F and my T. And then I can, let's see, now it's 8.4, so I just need to resize that one more time. Okay, and then fruits and veggies is our last one, so I'm gonna select that. And then for this one, I was gonna do it on two different lines, but, oh, and actually this font doesn't have an ampersand sign. Um, so I'm just gonna pick a different font, maybe something that looks similar. Um, you can do a different font if you want, but I'm just gonna, or sorry, you can just pick an entirely different font for that label, but I want more so I wanna keep my labels the same, the words. So I'm just going to look for something that's somewhat similar, maybe just kind of blocky. Um, and I wasn't anticipating this, but that looks good. I feel like that goes with it, that and sign, the ampersand. Um, so now I'm just going to maybe spread out my text a little bit on this one too. There we go, maybe 110. And then I'm gonna also make this one as wide as I can. So like 7.8-ish. Okay guys, so this is all we have to do to set up our project. Um, I am now going to load it into the machine and then we will hop into our software to send the cut to the machine. And guys, I have to apologize. I have a little bit of a cold, so I know that I kind of have the sniffles, so bear with me on that. Okay, so um, here's our Cameo 5 right here. Um, we are using the auto blade today, which comes with your Cameo 5 when you purchase it. It's our most commonly used blade here at Silhouette. We, I use it for almost all of my projects. And now we can go ahead and line up this edge of our mat with the arrow on the opposite side, on the left side. I'm just gonna push it in as far as I can. And then I'm gonna press the upward arrow. And it loads so nicely, so smoothly. Just pulls it in, feeds it really nice and evenly. I feel like that is definitely one big upgrade from the Cameo 4 is these rollers. They just, rollers and bar. They're really, really stiff and they work really nice. And now we're gonna go back to our, in our software and we're gonna be in our send panel. And I've already connected to my machine down here and then I actually am using matte vinyl today. I was using that last night on a project. So now um, all we need to do is um, click send at the bottom. All done. All right, guys, um, so it just finished cutting and I'm just gonna take my little hook tool and make sure that I can weed out the middle of one of the letters. Oh, poked right through it, but it does weed out really nicely. Um, so now I'm just gonna go ahead and press my little downward arrow to unload it. And we're all done with our computer now too. So you can put away your computer and put away your machine. And now we're just gonna do the rest of the project, which is just assembling. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut this um, where I'm not using it anymore. And actually one thing that I really like about these sheets of vinyl is they have a grid on the back, as does when you purchase vinyl from our Silhouette website actually. It also has straight lines on the back, so when you're cutting it, even if you don't have like a paper cutter or something, you can cut it pretty straight. And now I'm gonna just save that other half of white vinyl and then we're gonna go ahead and weed this. And when I weed, I just like to start in, a, in the corner and then kind of pull from the side. And one thing that I have been noticing lately, 
I always used to cut my vinyl on a two blade depth, but lately with these new machines, I've been cutting through the backing when I do that. So I have gone back to cutting it with a one because it's kind of a nightmare to um, put it on the transfer tape if it cut through the backing. It just does not come away from the transfer tape at all. So I feel like it doesn't weed quite as easy um, as before when I would use my Cameo 4 and when I would cut it on a 2. But that being said, um, everything about the new machine in general is just a lot easier. So this is just like probably my specific vinyl that I'm using and everything. And this is actually e weeding really, really easy. You just got to go nice and slow. Make sure you don't lose any letters. Okay, guys. So here are our labels and now we're just going to go ahead and transfer those onto our boxes and I'm going to go ahead and cut these up. You don't have to cut them up. If you want to leave them on altogether, you can. I just don't want to pick up any of the extra pieces or any of the other letters when I'm doing each of my labels. So I'm going to start with this one. I cut this piece of transfer tape, which is a little bit too small. Um, but I think it's actually going to work. I actually do that quite a bit um, when I'm transferring things. If you can't, if you don't quite cut it long enough, as long as it's touching at least part of the letter or whatever, you should be okay. See, so I have a little bit of my S. Another thing that you can do that I'll show you, just since we are new, most a lot of us. I'm just going to cut another tiny, tiny little piece and I'm just going to stick it on the end. And that just makes it so it for sure will work and just kind of overlap that with your other tape. And then we're going to take our scraper tool, just go right over it a few times, just get all the air bubbles out. And then I like to flip it over and then I like to pull my backing away from my transfer tape. And they don't always come super easy. And that just depends on like how old your transfer tape is, how old your vinyl is that you're using. Um, so what I do is I just kind of bend it as I go, put little creases in the tape and it always comes every time like that. So, okay. And now I'm just going to put my, um, box up like this. It's slanted to you guys slightly, so it might not look like it's straight, but it is going to be. And then I'm just going to kind of visually center it as much as I can. And then I'm going to just press down. And you could also put these on your counter if you would like. Um, a lot of the snacks that like my little boy eats, like applesauce and things like that, don't necessarily have to go in the fridge. Um, so when I was thinking of what to make, I was like, oh, what do I put on these bins? Um, but you could totally leave it on your counter um, with like apples or applesauce. But I think that right now this is going in the fridge and it is going to have like a bag of carrots, a pack of blueberries, some apples, just things to help us like remember them before they go bad. I think that's one of the big plus sides of organizing your fridge. So we've got fruits and veggies, and then um, let's do the leftovers bin next. And I'm gonna reuse my transfer tape, so. I might not talk you through it quite as much this time because it's all exactly the same. All right, guys, so here are our four bins right here. I'm just gonna kind of pick these up as we close up here, but all in all, this project really took less than 15 minutes to put together, um, which is super exciting, super fun, and easy to do. Um, so make sure to tune in next week for an all new video and to just keep coming back for more tutorials. And we're so excited when you're using your silhouette machine. So um, thank you so much for joining us and we'll see you next time.